Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator for Sim Update 7 today on November the 18th. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the weird issues and behaviors that have popped up and how to resolve some of them. And then we're going to take a look at some of the new features that are available, specifically dealing with live weather and see what that's like. All right, so let's get started. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. Alright, so right off the bat, the HUD inside the cockpit. A Sobo, no, absolutely not. Do not do this. So, let's figure out how to turn this off. So the first thing that we're going to want to do, we're going to want to go to general options and oh, no, actually we might have to do this from the assistance options, excuse me. And you can see all assists are on. Now the thing that has me epically scared right now, guys, is that I have turned all of this off already once. So I'm going to set this over back to true life. I'm also going to go down to user experience, um, ATC UI panel open at start. Absolutely not. I don't want that. ATC voices, nope, um, at least not at the moment. I might give them another test, we'll see. Uh, checklist UI panel open at start, no, which ironically enough, didn't pop up there when we started. And let's see here, G suit, and for right now, I'm gonna leave that off and end flight when aircraft shuts down. No, I actually hate that, but I'm kinda glad they put that in there, assuming it works. Um, I wanna decide when to end my flight. Okay, points of interest. Okay, all that has been turned off now, good, and we're gonna hit apply and save. Go back, resume, and boom. We are back to the cockpit that we all know and love and appreciate, and we just needed it to stay the way it ting was. <laughs> anyway, sorry, got a little dramatic there. The next thing I want to talk about, guys, is the world map issue. If you were like myself and got uber confused today, when you were unable to use your mouse to pan the world map around, one of our viewers, uh, Wise871, thank you very much for uh, posting this tip. I'm going to show you guys what to do. The issue was actually right in front of my face the whole time. I just didn't catch it. We have keyboard profile, M16 or F16 profile, M16, nice. Um, and what you actually need to do is if you notice this says default, notice that this says mouse profile. This is the profile that is causing the problem. If you cannot pan your world map around, come to your controls, you will likely see mouse profile. You want to change this back to default. Okay, as long as it is default, Everything will work as it did prior to Sim Update 7. I hate it when companies do this. I hate it when they force me to do something differently and don't make it public because they did not put that in the release notes, which I found to be pretty annoying. All right. So those are the two so far that I've dealt with. Um, the other thing I wanted to give you guys the heads up on is the Coronado um, 182T for me is crashing the Sim. Um, you can have it installed, but if you try to actually load into it, the SIM crashes. So I'm thinking that the Coronado aircraft have not updated and are not ready for SIM update seven. So, um, make sure that you guys, if you are experiencing a crash to desktop, it is the only crash to desktop that I have experienced. Um, so if you do experience that, um, if you're on a Coronado aircraft, try switching aircraft and see if the behavior goes away. Okay. Um, because every single time, every time I tried the 182, um, I didn't try any of the others. I didn't even think about it, honestly, until I loaded in already. Um, but uh, every time I tried to load in, no matter what else I had installed right now, I have none of my add-ons installed when I tried it the last time. 182, crashed it. Um, we're trying to load into the map. So now I have my add-ons back in and I can load into whatever I want. So the next thing we're going to check out is the MEDAR information that is now supposed to be available from the weather UI menu. And there it is. Well, look at that. All right, select an airport from the following list. KTUS, nice. All right, so we have winds 120 at 11 knots. Visibility 10, skies clear. Uh, temperature 27, dew point 6. Altimeter 3015, not bad. All right, now what I want to do is we're going to compare this to real world. I'm going to see if I can pull up KTUS Medar. Let's see what it is in the real world right now. 
And we're going to be using, bear with me for just a second. I've got a couple that have popped up, so I'm trying to see when they were updated last. All right, so I'm showing as of, let's see here, UTC, 2046 UTC, UTC to current time. I honestly don't know off the top of my head. UTC to current time. What do we got? Uh, let's see here. UTC time is 8.48 p.m. And we're 1.48, so it's seven hours in the future. Okay, so it's current. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. And. Well, 2046. UT okay, so it's not current. Um, anyway, sorry. I'm I'm bouncing around here. Let's see what we got here for the altimeter. 3015. Temperature 27. Meter 6. Winds 120 at 11 knots. So, I just compared this METAR information to real-world information, that the last update that I can find on uh, aviationweather.gov, and it is accurate. So, assuming that the winds are actually operating correctly, that is actually really awesome. So, you got a couple really cool advantages here to this, assuming that everything works right and stays the way we want it to. If it stays like this and truly operates well in the simulator, you can plan your flights, you can plan your departure now, um, before you ever get into the sim, you know, you can go into the weather service and actually see where we're at um, as far as um, your weather. You know, if you want to take off from, I don't know, San Francisco and you can go online, look up, just Google, you know, KSFO, meet our information and see what it is and decide, is this a flight you want to take? So high five to Asobo on that. This is the first time I have ever seen the weather be accurate. It's the first time I've ever seen it. Now, you know, I actually, I want to do something else here. I want to do something else. I want to, <laughs> I know, scary. This is where it gets crazy. Oh, my Lord. You do not have to yell at me, plane. That was very rude. I want to actually, believe it or not. Oh, probably helps if I turn the bus on. There we go. Let's get the ATIS. Winds 111 at 19 knots. Wow, at 19 knots. Holy crap. It is not that windy outside, is it really? Visibility 10, temperature 27, dew point 10. Although 11 left would be correct. 3015, that is correct. What did this have the temperature at? Did it have it as 27? Yes, 27, dew point 10. I've got a dew point of 6 according to the METAR information. So. The ATIS isn't quite accurate, but I can live with that as long as the winds are right. We still get a much better performance than what we normally get. Normally, they are absolutely nowhere freaking close for Tucson. This is the first time I've ever seen Tucson hook up correctly. So I'm excited about that. So go Asobo on that one. Really pleased to see that. It's a very, very nice improvement for the, um, for the weather system. Um, it actually is a bit hazy out. This this haze is actually pretty legit, shockingly enough. Whoa, hello, stutters. You gonna knock that off? Oof, I don't like that. Hmm. I don't like that at all. That sucks. Um, is what it is. I'm gonna have to dial that in still and figure out what's going on there, but other well. Yeah, man, that's bad. All right, so we've covered the... Ah, oh, it's because I never changed that. Let's get rid of that. So that was the other thing. I... <laughs> that was like a reminder, man, because that was going to be the last thing I wanted to talk about. So DirectX 11, I did a video on it earlier, or DirectX 12. I did a video on it earlier, and it was more of a demo, okay? But I want to talk about a few things to make sure everyone understands. Um, DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 won't necessarily, isn't necessarily going to increase FPS. What it is, it's supposed to be a more efficient API connection between simulator and video card. Okay. And that's very high level. Okay. That's a very high level explanation. It's far more in depth than that. But the things that it should necessarily, it, 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 it should have offered some 
FPS increase if it was functioning at its fullest, which Microsoft and Asobo already stated it is not. They stated very clearly in the release notes, this is a early release. It is an early implementation. I mean, it says DX12 beta right next to it. They were very smart to put that there, in my opinion. And they were very honest in the patch notes saying that, you know, for some it may help, for others it may make things worse. Okay, so not really going to knock them for that. I'm really not. Um, but I want to make sure that you guys understand some things that to be looking for. You're not necessarily going to be getting FPS increase. You, you won't. Okay, that's not necessarily the case. You should not take an FPS hit, which is what I did. Okay, and which is that was that stuttering that we were just seeing. That's what made me come in here and check. I was like, did I turn it off? Um, and apparently I did not. I thought I did when I ended the, the previous video. But um, so that is something that you guys do want to be aware of. Okay, is give it a shot. If it doesn't work, don't get upset. Don't get frustrated. Things like that. It's they announced it. It is an early implementation. And more or less what it should offer is better stability, faster retrieval of information from the video between video card and simulator. Um, so it should be more stable. You should get a more stable FPS. You should get um, less stutters, less um, latency, um, but not necessarily better FPS, more stable FPS is more accurate, but you should not take a hit. Um, I took a pretty significant hit when I tried it earlier, which is why we are going back to DX11. So I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll see where we're at. All right. The next thing I want to bring to you guys' attention is as of this moment, again, this is November the 18th, 2021, Sim Update 7. Flyby Wire has announced that the latest uh, release has, uh, has caused some very serious issues with flight planning in the Flyby Wire A32NX. And they are recommending that you temporarily uh, use their experimental version with DirectX 11. Do not try to use DirectX 12 with Flyby Wire's uh, A320, as they have blatantly said at this moment, it doesn't work. So, just something I want you guys to be aware of as well. All right, guys, so the last thing I want to take a look at in this video is the replay option. So, first, I'm going to show you guys how to access it. So we're going to go to general options. You want to make sure you go all the way down to developers, turn developer mode on, hit apply, hit go, hit resume, all that jazz. We're going to come up to options, go down to experimental and enable replay panel. You want to make sure that's checked. Okay. So I just unchecked it. You want to make sure it's checked. Okay. And if it's checked, you should see this guy right here. Now you probably be like, oh, we have to have the dev mode bar up. No, you don't. So you can come up here to the dev mode button and hit exit dev mode and the replay mode remains. So let's open that up. And uh, this is my first time using it, so we're gonna see what happens here. And we're gonna go to record. I'm gonna set sequence location, is what I'm assuming. Timeline controls, okay, and save as. All right, uh, show and hide UI. Interesting, okay, that doesn't seem to do anything. Um, and I'm gonna leave this up. Normally I would drag that off screen, I guess, but let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, do I have the parking brake release? Uh-oh, what did I do? Okay. All right, let's uh, see what happens. Nice little crosswind going on here. Where is this? We had DM? No. Who could see anything? I gotta know. I gotta know if I'm at Davis Monthan. <laughs> because I have no idea how I wound up there if I was. Uh, yeah. That's exactly... How did I wind up at Davis Monthan Air Force Base? Whatever. Alright, anyway. So now, let's see what the replay looks like. Alright, so if we do stop. And if I... Can I just... Alright, doesn't look like I can do that. What's this? Let's just hit play. Let's go to the outside... Uh-oh. Oh, see, I don't like that. Oh, camera recording. 
Because it's not letting me go to the external. Oh, that marks a spot. That's kind of cool. But I don't like that I can't get... Ah, okay, so hit that, and then we can come out here. I see. All right. That's really not bad, guys. Interesting. Huh. Seems to work very well. It'd be nice if there was more information on how to use it, because I don't understand what all these are. This clearly makes a mark in it, but then what do you do with it? Alright, so now let's let's do a, a pause. Alright, that's kind of cool. Stops everything in its tracks. And if I want to do a save as, then what? Replay... All right, so it's a JSON file. Huh. Very interesting. That's working pretty well. Let, I want to see what happens if, if the engine shut off. Let's, let's, let's test something else here. I'm kind of curious. So, and I really want to know what these mean. I don't seem to understand. Oh, I was able to click on that. I see. Oh, okay, so it just marks a point. It's a it's a reference for us. So if I'm back here and I want to click here, boom, I can snap right to it. That's actually kind of handy, especially for content creation, guys. I can tell you right now, that's an awesome little a little tool there, being able to mark a point. Huh. I'll be damned. Okay, so here's what I want to do next. What I'm going to do next, being the content creator guy that I am. Uh-oh. Uh, I want to stop. There we go. That's what I want. Uh, was it control shift to shut the engine down? So what I'm looking for here is one of the things that's really finicky in... You know what? I, I want to change planes here. Hang on a second. So one of the things that's really finicky with the current recording software that we have available is you can't record engine startup and engine shutdown. And sometimes that's a really cool effect to have you know, is to be able to, I totally did. I clicked on DM. Huh, funny. Um, is to be able to have that effect when you're um, doing a video. You know, it's always fun. Oh, guess what else is coming? <laughs> Anyways, um, especially for things like, you know, like the Corsair and things like that. Some of these engines, startups are really fun to see. So let's pick something. That's a fun little plane too, if you guys haven't tried that one yet. Uh, the EMB 200. That's a fun little plane. Little crop duster. Um, so let's just pick something here. Let's drop this guy. This is one of the new ones. So we'll be testing this out. We have so many things to try out right now, you guys. So many videos to make. It's going to be a busy weekend. It's going to be a busy weekend. But let's get loaded in this. And then I want to try starting that recorder. Or, well, I guess. Let's see. No, I guess I would start the engine, then run the replayer. But we'll see what happens. So the sim had a couple of weird quirks that I wasn't crazy about. But all in all, it seems to be going well. I don't know why I'm starting at night. I don't even know where it's getting the time from. Oh, it's probably because I don't have real time turned on. Let's turn real time on. There we go. Okay. So let's just, I guess, start the engine. I'm just doing an auto start. I just, again, we're just, just for testing purposes. Kind of a cool little plane though, isn't it? Some of the graphics look a little washed out. Like, what is that? Oh, it's reflection. Never mind, I see what that is. I get it. Okay, I was like, what is happening right there? Okay. And so now, I literally just want to run that replayer. Oh, I gotta do it every time. Lame sauce. Alright, so let's go back into... So every time you leave the, the menu, you're gonna have to rinse and repeat. So that's, that's alright. I can live with that. Let's go apply. Now, the other thing I'm wondering is how long does it save it for? That's the other thing I'm wondering. Sorry, I had to yawn. Whew. Well, although it says it's there. So I guess we'll just trigger it again. There we go. 
Okay, and is it there? Whoa, hey! Excuse me, sir! Sir! Settle down. Alright, so let's exit dev mode. Alright, and now I just want to... Alright, so how did we do this last time? We did record. Oh, no. I'm an idiot. I am totally bonkers. Alright, let's restart. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Restart. Need a dead airplane. You have to hit record first. I don't know. Don't ask me, okay? It's Thursday afternoon. It's been crazy. Um, aliens visited my house kind of thing. I mean, you guys know how that gets. You know, those aliens show up. Forget it. All right. Um, all right. Let's go back into options. And this is also a beta. This is early access, an, an initial release. So, again, being grateful for the fact that it's even here. If it works well... It's going to save me a ton of time. It's going to save all of us content creators a ton of time. Um, and a ton of messing around with other products. Not that I've actually had any problems. I, I got to say still. Um, honestly, most of mine, we'll see. But I would likely be, still be using Sky Dolly. I love Sky Dolly. It's a great program. Works really well. Simple, lightweight. All right, so now we're recording. Now let's start the engine. Okay, cool. That's that's all I wanted. So stop. And then now I want to hit play. Does it? It does. And if we want to do that, we come outside. Obviously, you'd want to give yourself more time to come around with the camera. But very cool. That's actually a seriously a big deal. Um, control surfaces and things like that are very often not... Oh, I see what it did when the... Con uh, Recording ended, it took us outside. Uh-oh. We have a problem here, though. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That was weird. I wonder why it bought the HUD up. Anyway. Um, I wonder if that's what the UI was. Hang on a second. No. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Too weird. Anyway, so definitely some goofy behavior. Oh, I have to stop the thing. That's right. Definitely going to take some getting used to, but seems to work really, really nicely. Uh, records aircraft controls, records engine startup. It flawlessly replayed the uh, event. The only other thing that I would want to check, and I guess we'll do one more test. The only other thing that I'd want to test with the replay service is landing gears. Um, one of the things that I have ran into in the past, you know, was like Sky Dolly. You know, you take off, you bring your gear up, obviously, right? So let's find an aircraft with a landing gear. We're going to need that. Um, yeah, sure. It really doesn't matter which one it is. Um, well, I probably should make it single engine. Here, sure, it really doesn't matter. Let's just drop a plane down. Um, what will happen is when I go to hit replay, um, and, uh, the landing gear doesn't fully extend, you know, fast enough for the replay. And so what happens is you smash your plane on the ground and then you have to restart. Now it's not a big deal because you have the recording, but I want to see how it handles the landing gear. I really want to see that. I think that'll make a big difference to uh, how we use it. But it's pretty slick, though. It really is slick. So far, not a bad update. And I like the effort that seems to be put into this update. You know, yeah, we got some new aircraft, new features, things like that, which we'll totally be testing. Um, but stability does seem to be relatively improved. You know, I'm really not upset about DX12. I did not have high hopes from from the first start. And what I mean by that is the initial release. You know, at DX12, it is not a new, um, as somebody mentioned before, it's not a new API, um, but it's not highly used yet, um, at least in the gaming industry. There's still many, many titles that do not use DirectX 12. Um, so it's not that surprising to me. I think the only one that I'm aware of that is actively using it 
maybe Forza, the new Forza, but I think Battlefield is the only one that really comes to my to mind that I'm I'm pretty certain uh, the latest Battlefield is using DirectX 12. But hell, I could be wrong about that too. So I'm really not upset about that. That that could have been it could have been worse. You know, um, the only crash I've seen again was to Coronado's aircraft, and quite frankly. Almost after every update, you know, we're waiting a few days for, for Coronado to catch up. So, you know, it is what it is. Not a big deal. Now, I got into the Just Flight Turbo, so hopefully that works. Although, you know what? The Just Flight Pipers have an update, too, that I don't think I've put in yet. Okay, cool. Whew. Couldn't remember if I've flown this t t yet today. All right, so Midar, that's weather. We're gonna have to do it again. So let's do that. All right, so this time, last test, general options, developers, on, apply. And it's in the developer area because it's still, again, this is also a, again, think of this as a beta. It's It's not officially in there yet. So let's go escape. All right, so let's see what happens. What do we got? Uh, parking brake, anybody remember where that is? That'd be the one. Let's go. Oh yeah, feel that power. Power of the Piper Arrow. Piper Arrow Turbo. Dun 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 Oh hey, there's the gear coming <laughs> Apparently the switch was already up. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I'm a freaking idiot. I'm an idiot. Why did you guys let me do this? I did it again. I, this is the problem with me being used to using third-party applications is that I totally forgot to hit the record button. Normally, it's already done before I get to the sim. I'm sorry. I, I promise. I'm not normally this airheaded. I'm not quite sure what's going on here today. So, let's try this again. Uh, did it make me do it? Oh, you suck. All right. Got to go back in here again. Goodness gracious. Um, and do, 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 developers. And you know, I wonder, do I actually have to, do I just need to turn developer mode on and then it shows up? Oh, I do. Okay, cool. That's handy. So you just got to turn it on. All right. Let's just do that. All right. I'm, I'm going to do it right this time. I promise. So here, here it is. Okay, see? I'm going to kick it off screen, though, because I want to see what happens. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Okay, I am hitting record. We are actively recording. Now I'm going, and I'm even bringing the landing gear switch down. But I forgot to release the parking brake. Son of a! You guys want to fly with me? I feel like I need somebody to fly with. You guys want to be my passengers? It'd be cool, right? You know, a couple guys and gals just hanging out in a Piper Arrow with a pilot. Okay, why'd the gear go up that time? Oh, because my landing gear switch is... I flipped the wrong switch. All right, the cool part is, though, that answered my question. So, let's find out. Here we go. So we're going to stop, and I'm going to hit play, and what did it do? I'm also going to pause right here. Is there any issue? Oh, record camera. I don't like that you have to do that. Man, it just, boom, done. Gears down. So that is really awesome. Um, again, props to them. Like, literally. It even stops the propeller. That's kind of cool. Let's see if we can get a cool screenshot without me ruining that. Ready? At least I held it down the center line. That's a pretty good center line, right? Right? Guys? I can't hear you. Are, are, are we still together? Are we still friends? I don't want you guys being mad at me, okay? Just because I'm a terrible pilot. Alright, guys. Oh, son of a... Alright, so I actually want to back up. Yeah, dude, and you can just go back and peg a spot. And there's the hide UI. Let's try one more thing. I want to look at one more thing. So here we go. It's recording that camera motion that I was doing earlier. Pause. Ah, oh, see, that's kind of nice. And then if I click back in here, can I... Oh, I got to hit record camera. Son of a... Go back to insert. And then now, at this point, I can 
Move her down to take my shot. Oh, I like that. Very handy. Okay, so. Epically cool stuff. Epically cool stuff. Um, I love what they've done so far. They really don't need a whole lot. I'm really curious how it works. I'm going to be testing the crap out of this over the next few videos. We'll be using this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but so far, I'm thoroughly impressed, and uh, I think they've done a great job. So um, it's nice to have this finally in the simulator by default. The functionality works really nicely. It's very smooth. The transitions are nice. Little gonky of a of a um, of a UI, but it's all right. But anyway, guys. Um, oh, and hey, you can also switch back to the previous tracks that we've recorded. So that's kind of cool too. All right, well, gentlemen. And ladies, I hope you guys have all had a wonderful day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.